When Sarah jumped into the water to swim, suddenly a man tied by a rope appeared beside her sinking to the bottom of the water. But she engrossed in swimming didn't notice at all. When she emerged from the water and looked towards the shore, the two girls who usually bullied her had taken her clothes directly. She prayed for her friend Claudia to help her, but what she got was betrayal. As Claudia hurriedly left, she took Sarah's last towel with her. Panic Sarah hurriedly swam towards the shore. She knew very well that hoping they would return her things was definitely impossible. And this place was far from home, taking advantage of the sparse crowd in the middle of the day. Sarah could walk along the main road in her swimsuit. Unexpectedly, just as she had not walked far, a car came from behind. The young people in the car recognized Sarah and honked at her urging her on and mocking Sarah as a pig. They even stopped the car hugged and kissed Sarah. After this incident, Sarah endured humiliation. To avoid such a situation happening again, she chose a small path back home. But after running a few steps, she found a white car parked ahead. As she cautiously passed by, suddenly a girl slowly climbed out from behind the car. The girl was none other than Maka who had just bullied her, her head covered in blood and struggling to breathe. A man emerged from behind and pulled her up. Then Sarah heard the sound of a car door closing. As the car started and passed by Sarah, the driver just glanced at her and continued driving. The car accidentally stalled in place. Suddenly a bloodied hand slapped against the window, seeing the rings and bracelets on the hand. Sarah immediately recognized the person inside as Claudia. The driver stared at her intently through the rearview mirror, and Claudia locked inside the car also saw Sarah. She pounded on the glass seeking help. The driver noticing the commotion was very anxious. He quickly turned the car key to try to leave. When it wouldn't start, he pushed open the door, but the driver took out a towel from the car and gently placed it on the ground. Sarah quickly understood the driver's intention. She slowly raised her left hand and nodded towards the man, seeing the situation was not right. Claudia's cries for help grew louder, but Sarah remained indifferent. After the driver closed the car door and left, the summer sun shone on the Spanish countryside town. Sarah worked in her parents' butcher shop, envious of the lives of other girls, quietly watching their short videos every day. That day, Claudia came to the shop to buy meat, accompanied by a girl named Rosie who secretly took a photo. In a flash, it was uploaded online while Sarah was getting meat from the warehouse. She saw that photo with the words Damn Fatso written on it. Just as Sarah felt down about it, her hand accidentally tapped the screen. Directly liking the photo, she quickly unliked it and vented her frustration towards the pork beside her. Meanwhile, a boy appeared on the ground and Sarah went up and kicked him. It turned out the boy was her brother hiding in the freezer to slack off. Claudia came out of the butcher shop fiddling with her bracelet, while her boyfriend Pedro rode a motorcycle enjoying the breeze. Passing by the natural swimming pool in the town, there was a white car parked nearby, and the driver was cooling off by the poolside. He just glanced at the waitress a little longer, only to be reprimanded by the man in front of him. Little did he know that the man would be drowned by the driver later on, every noon when the crowds dispersed. After Sarah's mother fell asleep, she would put on her small backpack and walk to the swimming pool listening to music. Passing by the police station on the way, she was startled by a police dog. Sarah liked swimming when there were few people around, and noon was the best time for that. Just as she was about to get into the water, suddenly a man emerged from the surface. Scaring Sarah directly, he floated on the water without moving. Staring at Sarah with his eyes, then the sound of a girl's voice from a distance interrupted them. Maka and her two friends saw Sarah coming to swim and started their usual mockery, cursing Sarah for being fat all over and teasing her for having a boyfriend without telling them, without caring whether the man minded or not. They would soon regret their actions. To avoid Maka's vulgar words, Sarah hid in the water. When she surfaced again, the driver had already left the pool. Suddenly, a fishing net caught her head and Maka and her friends came to the shore to continue bullying her. Sarah struggled to push away the fishing net, but Maka easily pulled it back. Through the fishing net, Sarah saw the white car leaving the bridge. She began to seek help from her friend Claudia, but Claudia not only didn't help, but also took out her phone to record the moment. Sarah could only push away the fishing net and dive into the water. Then the scene from the beginning happened. The driver, because of a man's words, drowned him in the water and incidentally kidnapped the waitress. For some reason, the driver felt sympathy for chubby Sarah. So he helped her solve three troubles. Sarah, still shaken by the departing car, picked up the towel, draped it over herself, and returned to the main road, passing by the police station. An officer noticed Sarah's odd behavior and loudly asked what was wrong. Sarah, afraid to answer quick in her pace, back home afraid to disturb her parents, she hurriedly ran upstairs. While going upstairs, she accidentally knocked over a photo frame. Showing herself and her father hunting, Sarah took a hot shower, but Claudia's cries for help in the car lingered in her mind. 
Her nervousness blocked out all external sounds, until her mother opened the bathroom door interrupting her. Her mother was always strict with her. Without asking the reason, she ordered her daughter to quickly go help in the shop. In her bedroom, Sarah took out her box, containing her favorite sweet bread. Then she opened her laptop, and looked at the photo taken by those girls in the morning and their unfriendly comments. Sarah cursed at them bitterly, and decided to conceal the truth of the matter. But her backpack had been taken by the three of them, and she needed to find an opportunity to get it back. Just as she arrived at the convenience store to buy something, the bracelet on her right hand caught her attention. She found a pair of scissors, cut it off and threw it on the ground. A man appeared behind her and picked it up. Sarah enjoyed her newly bought lollipop, but didn't notice the white car appearing nearby. She walked a few steps and then stopped. The street was crowded with people, discussing the incident at the swimming pool. Knowing that Sarah went to the swimming pool every day, her mother took her to the scene as soon as she heard about the incident. On the way there, the white car followed closely behind. Sarah looked out through the glass and saw the swimming pool surrounded by caution tape. When she learned that a man's body had been retrieved, Sarah vomited on the spot. Her mother fearing her child might get infected, quickly confessed to the cops. Sarah feeling guilty couldn't admit that she had been to the pool at noon and could only lie that she had gone swimming by the river. She angrily shouted at her mother, saying that others mocked her for looking like a pig and her mother did nothing. Her mother was surprised to see her daughter's condition and resolved to help her get out of trouble after getting off the car. Then her mother prepared a sumptuous dinner, but only gave her daughter a portion of vegetable salad, deciding that she should start losing weight from now on. The family was surprised to learn that their neighbor Claudia had been bullying Sarah. Just then Claudia's mother, unable to contact her daughter, came to ask Sarah if she knew Claudia's whereabouts. Sarah's mother straightforward as always, exposed everything about Claudia and her friends bullying Sarah, and directly kicked her out. At this moment, Sarah also realized something that her phone was left in her backpack. So she secretly took her father's phone and rushed to the road where the incident happened. As Sarah dialed the phone and searched, she quickly discovered some suspicious traces. She picked up something from the ground, which turned out to be a girl's nail. Suddenly, she heard a ringing sound behind her, and turning around, she found it was a lost bull. Thankfully, it was a false alarm. Following the bloodstains, Sarah continued searching and gradually heard the ringtone of her phone. Under a small flashlight, Sarah found her backpack. Just as she curiously looked at the flashlight, suddenly lights lit up behind her, and it turned out the driver had been following her closely. Sarah was terrified. Both of them stared at each other in silence. In the distance, the sound of a car driving could be heard. The driver, noticing the situation, grabbed Sarah's hand, kicked off the nearby light, and walked into the darkness. Led by Claudia's mother, the parents found the location based on the phone's GPS. After picking up the phone, the driver quickly turned it off. After observing Sarah for a day, he developed a liking for her and let her go. Taking advantage of the night, Sarah evaded the search team and fled back home, while the others found the waitress's body. Seeing the situation, Claudia's mother fainted on the spot, thinking her daughter must have something bad happened. Back home, Sarah encountered Claudia's boyfriend, Pedro, again. Pedro knew about Sarah lying to the cops, because he saw Claudia's video at the pool in their group chat. They were together with Sarah before they disappeared, and Sarah didn't say much about it. At this time, Sarah's mother, hanging clothes at home, noticed something. She saw a towel that didn't belong to her daughter, with a trace of blood on it. Realizing the situation was bad, she hurried to look for Sarah. At this time, Claudia's mother found her, and Pedro no longer helped Sarah conceal anything, revealing Sarah's lie to the cops. As the few argued about this, Sarah's mother suddenly showed up and helped Sarah. For her daughter's sake, she fought Claudia's mother, until the cops arrived and ended the farce. The driver observed everything from a distance. After arriving at the police station, Sarah confessed to the officer that she had been to the pool, but her statement didn't reveal the driver's existence, only saying she was bullied by three people, and later escaped from the pool without clothes. The officer beside her felt Sarah must be hiding something, and tried to persuade her to help. But just as Sarah was about to speak up, her mother suddenly spoke up and interrupted her. Feeling her daughter had the right to remain silent, she forcibly took her away from the police station. On the way back, the mother warned her daughter not to say a word halfway. Sarah, angry and unwilling to listen to her mother's nagging, walked straight home. However, something big was happening at home. The driver had sneaked into Sarah's bedroom. Just as she stood in front of the dressing table, Sarah's father walked into the room. The driver quickly turned around and attacked him with something. Just then Sarah arrived, but her mother nagging as usual asked Sarah to go downstairs first. She took out a towel and closed the door, questioning her daughter why Claudia's thing was in her hands and why she lied to her. Though her mother wanted to help her, her expression was too intense. Having endured oppression for so long, Sarah couldn't tolerate her mother's behavior anymore. The two had a heated argument. Sarah felt her mother like everyone else didn't understand her. The more they argued, the more emotional and radical Sarah became. 
Eventually, she shouted that she wished everyone was dead. Hearing this, her mother couldn't take it anymore. Just as she raised her hand, a big hand grabbed her arm. But then came a heavy blow from the driver. Suddenly, there was a noise from upstairs. It turned out that Sarah's brother had woken up and needed to use the toilet. He called for his mother to bring him some toilet paper. But the driver made a gesture to Sarah to keep quiet, seeing the child still talking. He took out a knife ready to go upstairs. Thankfully, Sarah stopped him in time and shook her head towards the driver. Unexpectedly, the driver obediently put away the knife and took a shotgun. Sarah wanted to take another look at her mother, but the driver pulled her away the two drove northward. And just as the driver handed Sarah some snacks, a bull suddenly appeared in front of them. The driver couldn't react in time and, and collided with it. Sarah passed out on the spot. Luckily, the driver was strong enough to carry Sarah slowly into his place. When Sarah woke up, it was already daytime. She couldn't believe her surroundings. Soon she heard someone breathing nearby. It turned out to be the two girls who bullied her. They were still alive. Seeing them, Sarah breathed a sigh of relief and hurried to help them untie themselves. But just as she untied Claudia, Claudia urgently asked Sarah where the cops were and why Sarah was alone. That's when they realized Sarah hadn't called the cops at all. Sarah quickly explained that she was terrified at the time, and it was all her fault. Desperated Claudia blamed everything on Sarah. At the same time, they heard the sound of a car engine outside. It seemed the driver was back. This frightened them and they hurried into action. Rosie asked Sarah to help her untie herself first, but Claudia called her over to help her instead. Sarah obediently went over, but after a while, she couldn't untie her. Claudia yelled that Sarah was stupid, unable to bear it Sarah threw Claudia out and slid down the zip line to the side. Claudia softened and continued to plead for Sarah's help. At this moment, the driver was getting closer. Sarah could only hide for now. Seeing the scene in front, the driver became angry and started searching for Sarah everywhere. Sarah hid in a hole underneath and unexpectedly encountered Maka's body. Sarah was completely terrified by the sight and screamed and screamed frantically. The driver hugged her tightly and comforted the panicked Sarah. But the next moment, he handed her a knife. The driver felt that Sarah's time of being bullied was over and that they deserved to taste being bullied. Sarah, however, turned her body around and aimed the knife at the driver behind her. After a fight, the driver fell into a pool of blood. Then Sarah picked up her own shotgun. Rosie didn't understand what was happening and quickly asked Sarah what she was going to do. Sarah turned around and fired a shot. When she raised the shotgun again, her target was Claudia who had lost a hand. Claudia begged Sarah to spare her life and promised never to speak recklessly again. But Sarah pulled the trigger without hesitation. She dropped the shotgun and walked silently towards the door. Suddenly Claudia struggled to get up and Rosie began to untie herself. In the glow of the setting sun, Barefoot Sarah set off on the road home again after this ordeal. Sarah abandoned her previous timidity and self-doubt and became even more firm and confident. 